welcome to Pepper Shop Media's Marketing Expedition Podcast, keeping you up to date with the latest in marketing and advertising. Now, here's your host, Ray Allen. Welcome to the Marketing Expedition Podcast. I'm your host, Ray Allen. I'm the president and CEO of Pepper Shock Media and founder of the Marketing Expedition Dot com community. And today we have Toby, who's graduated from the University of Utah with degrees in sociology and political science and a certificate in criminology. Ooh, <laughs> she is <laughs> lucky enough to have one of the, uh, an awesome husband, two daughters and three crazy cats. <laughs> oh, no, we're not going to go so far as to call you the crazy cat lady yet. <laughs> three okay, is fine. called that. Three is- Ah, (laughs) Toby fell in love with traveling when she was 17 and she backpacked through Europe and drove from Utah to Canada with her two best friends. And after college, she started traveling with her husband and daughters. And in 2002, they spent three months backpacking through central Mexico. And in 2013, they drove from Utah to Guatemala where they lived, worked, and volunteered for three months. Toby stays busy working as a a birth and postpartum doula and running her nonprofit organization, Guatemalan Humanitarian Tours, where she leads 11-day tours exploring the country, giving back, and having a blast while learning all about life and how others live. Welcome to the show, Toby. Thank you so much, Ray. It's great to see you virtually at least. <laughs> right. Well, Toby, so um, I, I just love that you, you know, have this adventure, the sense of adventure, right? We're on a marketing expedition and you get to tell us all about these adventures that you're having and about your business and ways that you're doing to, to market. But uh, just tell me, like, how many times have you gone and, and taken these tours with people? Uh, this would be our eighth year. So, wow. this, I mean, of course, cancel this year's trips, but this would have been our eighth Mm -hmm. year going down. Um, I planned it in the summer so that I could have teenagers come with me during their summer break. So we've been traveling for the last eight summers. I I sadly, we had to cancel this year round, but you're planning for next year in 2021. Is that right? I am full steam ahead. Yes. We've got so much great work to do and so many life lessons to learn that we are hoping and praying that the world comes back to normal and we get to travel again. Yeah. I mean, and it seems like to take 11 days to go and do good work, right? Like, tell me, tell me kind of the experience. What do you do? Where do you go? What kind of things do you learn? I mean, tell me about this 11 days. Okay. So This was the whole objective was that I had to create a tour that my daughters wanted to come on every single summer. This was their vacation. So um, I did a mix of adventure travel with our humanitarian service. So we are in a different city about every other night. So that is what sets us apart is that we're not staying in one location, working with one organization. We have teamed up with local nonprofits on the ground um, and we get to spend our days supporting them. So we actually started our own preschool and our own nutrition initiative. So as of this year, we're providing over 480 meals a month for our preschool students. Wow. That's so that would be that would be like the funnest part for us. We get to go and prepare meals for our kiddos, volunteer at our preschool, read to our kiddos. And it is an English speaking preschool. So, I mean, to have native speakers come is a huge thing. Um, So we'll just be able to go and speak our own language and help the kiddos. It's a huge benefit to their life. It will change the trajectory of their lives just by knowing this language. So We've um, built a little library there and that's the whole goal. It's a 20 year goal to see these kids go to university and learn English and change their lives. And maybe they can even come and visit us here. (laughs) I know. know. So wait, wait, hang on. So you created a preschool, you created this, you started it and made this happen. Yes. I have a teacher in Guatemala and she and I teamed up to make this a reality. Wow. That is so amazing. I just can only imagine what it's like. And I've seen some pictures previously from, you know, working with you before. And, and so just to be there, tell me what, what is it like to see these kids and, and, you know, have them around you? 
it's life affirming. Like it's just such good energy, such good vibes. Um, children don't need to speak the language, right? Like there's no barriers. There's no, there's no uncomfortableness. There's no boundaries. It's just like pure love. So that's like one of my main focuses is when we walk into a school or an orphanage, it's, or a small village. Um, it's just that we're offering love and hope. So we, what I've done is create relationships with other NGOs and so that we can go in and support what they're doing. So we'll spend time at our preschool and our nutrition program, and then we'll go across the lake and help install wood burning stoves with another nonprofit. And, you know, that's just like a real quick, amazing way to change a family's life in the matter of, you know, half of a day. It's environmentally friendly, it's sustainable, it decreases their cost and need for deforestation and wood. So we get to leave these families with a wood burning stove, pre, um, all the fun things they need to cook on, and then some money for, you know, just to fill their pantry with a little bit of groceries. So that's a fabulous day, a super, super fun day. And then we just travel the rest of the time. So we're in a different city. We're hiking Mayan ruins. We're seeing, you know, the location that that's the thing is that there's waterfalls, there's rivers, there's lakes, there's black sand beaches, there's active volcanoes. Like if you stayed in one place, you would miss it all. So <laughs> you have to, you know, I'm like, no, 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 we have to go. We have to see it. So we get a good share of zip line. You know, we spend an afternoon at the zip lines after volunteering, and then we get to go hike up an active volcano and roast marshmallows in the hot pots. So like the little hot pockets, it's been like a true adventure and it's an adventure of giving back. So it's a win-win. That sounds amazing. I mean, just to be able to help and do all that you do, but then also to take those adventures and seek it all out. Tell me, who, who's your target audience? Who are the people that come with you on these trips? I mean, I'm sure it's kind of a wide range, but give me kind of your ideal target. Who do you want to attract to come with you on these? So anyone with an, like a adventurous soul or humanitarian minded person, someone who like a parent who feels like their them or the, their child needs to get outside of their bubble. Maybe their child is too self-absorbed or too focused on video games or too concerned about what they wear. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's the time of life for teens to be self-absorbed. Um, and that's why I focused on this age group because I wanted them to get out of their bubble and to get out of their comfort zone and to come and walk the dirt roads and walk into people's homes that are on dirt floors and cinder block walls because it's eye opening. Like the first time I ever went to Guatemala, I was in my thirties and, you know, it just was so eye opening to my entire family. And after that trip, that's when I said, oh, this is something we need to do every year just for our own selves, for our, like our own self-development and character development. And we need this. That is so cool. So, so you said your, your daughters, what, what do they say about this? I mean, what kind of experience from their eyes, like if you were to step in their shoes a little bit and what they've expressed with you, what are they saying after they've gone through this with you? Yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, so they were young when we started this program. Um, my youngest was five and my oldest was nine. So I don't know, maybe they don't have other ideas like of what summer should be. <laughs> so um, right. we spend our summers like collecting donations and packing luggage so that we can take donations down. It's changed their lives for sure. They've been able to meet people and see the reality of life for the vast majority of the population of this earth don't live as comfortably as they do. And they get to see that. So on a very fun level, you know, they get to go and have lots of fun and they love being able to give back and read to the kiddos at the preschool, read to the kiddos at the orphanage. But then they also make friends that are their age. And thanks to technology, they've been able to stay in touch and 
like watch each other, you know, through the years as they age and grow up. So it's just been win-win for all of us, for everybody involved. Right. So have you had any uh, other repeat offenders of other people that come, come more than once or is it just kind of, yeah, uh, I've had, yeah, I've had, a, I've had a handful of kiddos that have come for multiple summers. My oldest daughter, I feel like she aged out almost, but now, and that's what I felt like after she graduated high school, I was like, oh, okay. So we're done with this. And then now her and her college friends are like, oh, wait, we want to go to Guatemala with you. Like, when can we come? <laughs> I'm like, awesome. Yay. So you haven't <laughs> aged out. Yeah. So truthfully, like some of the most life-changing experiences occur when a parent joins their teen, because a lot of parents haven't done this travel themselves, right? Like a lot of parents mm-hmm. haven't done humanitarian travel, haven't seen developing country life. So for them to be able to share that experience with their teen, is just like, cemented memories that will last for the rest of their lives and they get to share it together. So I, you know, those are like the moments and I encourage and love adults, guardians, aunts, uncles to join their teen. And I also have like grand ideas of hosting a square foot garden group, you know, or Mm -hmm. a retired group or women's only group. So like, I'm happy to create a group tour specific for any person that really wants to make it happen. Wow. That's so awesome. I just, you know, while you're talking, I'm just envisioning, you know, my two boys, I have a, uh, at this time, you know, 12 and, and 15 year old and just thinking through like what they would do and how they would act and what they would say and, yeah. and, you know, all of those things. So I think that this is just a really great effort. And so how many people do you normally take at a time with you? My perfect group size is 10 to 12. So it's definitely more intimate than a large, a large nonprofit organization. I like, I mean, I lead every trip myself. So I like to be able to have a familial family group, you know, that we travel like a family. So we have our same bus driver that has traveled with us for all of these years. And then he knows all of the locations that we're going and we travel like in the same place at the same time all together so that we're Mm -hmm. always in the same Airbnb where, you know, I hire local women to come into our Airbnb and prepare meals for us. And so we can learn some traditional Guatemalan cooking. And then I have friends that still do what's called backlooming. And it's a tradition that was handed down like thousands of years from their Mayan ancestors. Wow. And they prepare these, I mean, just gorgeous, beautiful handmade scarves and table runners, you know, just these beautiful pieces of art. So we get to go spend the afternoon with them, watching them work and they prepare a traditional meal for us over open fire. So just like I wanted a group size that allowed us to be in people's yeah. homes. Like in, these are homes that are the sizes of some people's living room, right? So like we need to have a group that's small enough that allows us entrance into these locations. Right, right. And and you pretty much can take anybody from anywhere, right? I mean, you're not just limiting to to people that you know specifically with you, but people that share that kind of common, you know, ham, humanitarian adventurous effort, right? Have you had people from oh, yeah. from other parts of the country come with you? Yeah, so for sure, we've had kids and families come from Montana and New Mexico, Arizona, um, wow. Washington State. Monta- I might have said Montana, so yeah, like <laughs> around Utah. So. I am happy to have anybody that wants to be with us, join us. I have no locational Mm -hmm. restrictions. So anyone who wants to come, we would love to have you share these experiences with us. That's pretty amazing. Okay. So share how people can get, uh, you know, information or where they can find you. We're on LinkedIn. We're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. We've got a website. Easiest way to find it is ghtours.org. The full name is Guatemalan Humanitarian Tours. And a lot of people have a hard time spelling all of that. So yeah, GH Tours online, or you can find us on Facebook, Guatemalan Humanitarian Tours. We've got sponsorship 
opportunities available if anyone, a corporation or a family is interested in sponsoring one of our kiddos. We've got loads of ways to get involved. So if this reaches to you, if this resonates with you, let's brainstorm and we will definitely work out a way to make this. Seems like a great marketing uh, sponsorship opportunity. Well, let's talk a little bit more about that. So if a business wanted to sponsor, what do they, what kind of value do they get out of it? And, you know, what kind of exposure, uh, you know, obviously to be associated with humanitarian efforts is always good for a brand, but just share right. a little bit more, kind of give me an example of maybe somebody who's done this before and what they did and what value they received. Yeah. So right now, any fam, like any individual that's sponsoring, I've got businesses and individuals that are, that are sponsoring the donation each month is $37 a month. You are happy to raise that up. I have no problem with that. So $37 a month provides a meal and like it provides the nutrition aspect or the educational aspect for each one of our kiddos. And then if we have a corporate sponsor, then we will add them to our website and link them into our newsletters and thank them publicly. Any help that we can offer as far as marketing and cross-branding, we're happy to do it. That's awesome. Have you ever had anybody go and record video of you in, in action? I should look at your website and see if you've got some videos, but tell me more. <laughs> yeah, we've got, we've got some YouTube videos. It's definitely a work in progress. Like I have so many fun plans for a videographer next year. So yeah, like I have all these ideas with a drone because the scenery is so awesome. So we've got a YouTube channel Guatemalan humanitarian tours. And so we've got videos on YouTube. We've got some of our students that have been recorded giving their, you know, their thoughts about the last days that we were in the country. So just fun stuff like that. So we have video and definitely, definitely need more. <laughs> well, if we ever make a trip down, we'll definitely have to bring some gear and, and make, make it a, make it a thing, make it a, like a mini documentary or something. That would oh be gosh. amazing. We can so, make it a thing. Let me just back up a little bit. I want to talk more about you and, you know, obviously to have a humanitarian heart as you do. I mean, let's just talk a little bit more about kind of where you got, what was your path? What got you to where you are now? Well, that's a super fun question. You know, so my mom raised us as a single mom. She had six kiddos under like the age of 12. Bless um, her heart. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> so like we didn't have much, we lived on welfare. We had food stamps. You know, my youngest brother was six months old when she was no longer married. So we, we didn't have extra, but my mom always taught us that there was someone that was worse off than us and that it was our job to help them and offer them whatever we had. So we Aww, always did. Sounds like fun. a good mama. <laughs> I know she's a really good mama. You know, we did I don't even know where this came from, but she always, every year we did the 12 days of Christmas and we would find someone in our neighborhood that was having a rough year, a, you know, a death in the family, um, whatever, just like a sadness that, or if they were struggling financially or a layoff or whatever, then we would just spend 12 days offering them gifts. And lots of it was like homemade, you know, because we didn't have money to go to the market, but Oh, but those are the best gifts in the world for sure. Yeah. yeah. I, I remember vividly my mom making special candles and, you know, just like homemade gifts that we would deliver. And so you secretly run up and, you know, as kids, that's the super funnest. You run and you knock on the door and hide, you know. So <laughs> I love it. we did that every year for my entire life and we would go for you know for thanksgiving and deliver food to the homeless shelters and i did my first like coat collection when i was in the 8th grade and i remember thinking to myself like there's it would it's going to be so much easier if i have more people involved you know like i can collect five coats myself but if i get the school involved then like we can collect a thousand coats right like yeah. Like, so just like that, I think it was just, it's just innate, like in our DNA that it's just good to give back. It's good for 
everybody to pay it. Well, and I love that your daughter now in college is doing the same thing and wants to still be a part of what you're doing, right? Yeah, yeah. That's that's a proud mama moment too, I'm sure. (laughs) It is. It's a testament too that we're doing something right. That's awesome. Okay, so next, uh, you know, I know that this is podcast will be, you know, on forever, but you do this every year. So, but let's just talk about 2021. Um, when are you going to do this trip and, um, you know, when's the latest that people can register, how much does it cost, you know, all of those things. Okay. So we've got our typical summer trip. Um, it's going to be in July of 2021. And then I have always do it in July. Is this always a July? Typically. Typically. Yeah, typically okay. like the end, the middle to end of July is when we're usually gone. Gotcha. So that trip is 11 days. It's $3,700. It's all inclusive. So that's airfare, all of our meals, all of our travel, all of the adventure tours, entrance to all the museums and the ruins and every, every, everything. So the participants that join us, they bring whatever money they'd like for souvenirs and mm-hmm. then they don't. They don't have to worry about one thing while we're there. The beauty of having our company as a nonprofit is that the trip is a tax write-off. So wow. yeah, so I think a lot of people miss out on how huge that is. So yeah, you can do the trip and take this information to your CPA. A mom and daughter who joined us last summer, she, you know, she told me, mm-hmm. she's like, this was huge. Like, it's yeah. like, you know, over $7,000 in tax write-off. And we got to have this grand adventure for it. So that's the main summer trip. And then I have two fall trips planned and they're much shorter in time. I was thinking like adults, working adults, women Mm -hmm. only. And then I have a personalized trip for a group of individuals that are all connected together that want to take this trip together. So yeah, so I mean, I'm open and willing to make it happened. However, like team building a corporation that wants to write this off as a business, you know, training event, like, however, like, however we can make it happen. It's such a great experience. It's so vital. It's so worth doing that. I'm happy to help make it happen. However possible. That sounds amazing. Well, I like the fact that it's a write-off too. That that's very helpful. And, and people can, you know, contribute to people's journey to do this too. Like that's part of the sponsorship or is it mostly the sponsorship for the, the students that are, or the people that are there in Guatemala? Yeah. The sponsorships are for our preschool students, but gotcha. 100% people can donate to gotcha. like an individual's trip themselves. So I've had a lot of students do a Facebook fundraiser. And Facebook is fabulous and then sends a tax deductible receipt to each person who donates. I've had a lot of people, a lot of my participants have done brainstorm things. They've created posters, they've taken photos to share with all of the people that donated towards their trip. So like to help them be involved and to help them feel, you know, the gratitude for their donations. So a hundred percent, like, I'm always like, tell your family that you don't want a Christmas gift. Like who needs right. Christmas gifts? So I was just thinking too, I have so many airline miles now and like oh, yeah. credits because of all of my trips that got canceled. <laughs> so, so if I wanted to do this and I wanted to use up my airline miles and credit, I mean, we would have to kind of work out the, the uh, difference in, in airfare or whatever, but yeah, I mean, 100%. I'm sure. I yeah. am not the only one in the, in this uh, situation where, you know, you have credits to use up or, you know, <laughs> yeah, I mean, all these miles that I've been racking up, not able to even go anywhere, you know, because know. we were all officially grounded. I, I told my kids like adults are getting grounded. We can't go anywhere. <laughs> we're all on house arrest. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah. We'll have to figure that out. <laughs> That's a no brainer. I've had individuals who work for the airlines that join us and they just take care of their own airfare. And it's like, I mean, no big deal at all. So Mm -hmm. yeah, I will definitely work with anybody to just take off their airfare from the cost of the trip and have them take care of their own airfare. Right. As long as you end up at the same place around the same time, I guess that probably is what matters most, right? Absolutely. Yeah. We spend, (laughs) we spend the first night in Guatemala city. So, um, at a friend's house, it's about 
10 minutes from the airport. So we would make it work if they came in at a different time than us. So and right, if anyone right. was coming, if I, you know, if we have participants coming from the East coast, then we'll just meet in Dallas and head down together. So it's so easy. It's really, I mean, a hundred percent, we'll just make it happen. Where there's a will, there's a way. That's what my grandma always used to say. <laughs> I love it. Yes, I do agree. <laughs> Okay. So because we're on a marketing expedition and our listeners like to listen to get ideas and tips and things that they can use in their own business or their own nonprofit, what are some ways that you have been successful at marketing and getting the word and spreading the word about this great thing that you're doing? Share, share some ideas with what, what's worked for you. As you know, marketing is like so tricky sometimes. So it can be, yes, it can. It can be a tricky adventure. Um, so what I've done is I've teamed up and with local charities that are also humanitarian minded and who also are, you know, contemplating the way that they can help others. So I have, we have a fun little group of individuals here in Salt Lake City that get together and just brainstorm together different, you know, foundations to reach out to different grants that are available. So having someone that's like-minded that you can brainstorm with and throw ideas at has been vital. And then I have a great group of board members who I've got a marketing guy on my board who helps out with web design and content creation. And I've got, you know, very intelligent writers on my board who can help with our grant applications. So I think- Like it's just been about surrounding myself with great people. Like my philosophy is definitely to be like the most inquisitive person in the room. Like there's so many people that have done this so much better, you know, and for so much longer. And so, you know, like be willing to ask, be willing to not be the expert, like find out how they did it, how they made it happen. So those would be my, my go-to's. Well, and I love that you've made your board full of, you know, an eclectic group of people that have various different skill sets and different, you know, ideas and things that you can glean and, and, and draw from that is very helpful. And a lot of businesses, you know, even if they're, an, if they're a business and not a nonprofit, will get an advisory board and they'll make up different people from legal to financial to, like you said, marketing and, you know, writers, and then just collectively draw on all of that experience and and I we have a pepper shock advisory board and it's it's great because then you can like you said bounce those ideas off of them and then they can tell you whether or not you're just like you know that's right. the you know great idea or not such a great idea and, and tell you why right right and, and they're not afraid to to tell you their opinion because you are specifically coming to them for for your their advice right I mean that's what yeah. they're there for <laughs> so that's great So, okay. How long have you been in business now? How long you said eight years you've been doing this? Yeah. So eight years ago we started the trips and then I actually went to official 501c3 status. Um, It's been two and a half years. So that's been a new adventure. Congratulations. You made it past the two year, you know, mark, right? That's good. (laughs) I feel, yeah, just this week we had to fill out like a specific paperwork that allows us to solicit funds in Utah. And it's not like easy, you know, there's so much paperwork and they need so much information. So I, I just thanked the lady for her patience. I'm like, thank you so much. I'm like, I I think we we're getting the hang of it. Like after two years, (laughs) we're getting the hang of it. We got this handled. So yeah. Excellent. All right. Well, okay. So one last question for you, where do you see yourself in five years from now, where is this going to go? What are you going to do? How, how is it going to adapt and evolve? And, and what do you want to see in five years happen? I love it. I love it. Um, so I'm a dreamer. I, in five years, I can envision us having a couple of classrooms for our preschool instead of just our one classroom preschool. So I can see us having a couple of classrooms and as we, as our kiddos age, then we're going to need more sponsors and we're going to change more lives. I would like to be leading four trips a year and have corporate sponsors and team building expeditions and just have other people get to experience this 
out of the box thinking, out of the box activities. So yeah, I mean, it's only going to get better and more successful. It's only going to be like more smooth running as time goes on. So I'm excited to see what five years brings. That's amazing. It just gave me a good thought too. Maybe we can have the marketing expedition community go on a Guatemalan humanitarian expedition with you. Heck yeah. <laughs> yeah, Let's we can do totally it. do something cool like that. Why not? Oh Why gosh. not? Right? We can do Let's some do team it. building. We can do some, you know, teaching and training, but also, you know, some some great uh, great humanitarian efforts that help uh, sponsorships and, you know, brand building exercises, but I think this would be a great uh, <laughs> partnership. You know, we're all I going on a, an expedition together in one way or another. <laughs> yes. An expedition. Let's do it. There you go. Yep. Well, thank you so much, Toby. This has been great. Uh, and, and just, you know, one more time, give people your, your website address and just how to reach you and, and all that good stuff. And then we'll, we'll wrap it up here. Okay. So um, if anyone is interested on Facebook, they can find me under my name, Toby Spears, T-O-B-I-E. S P E A R S. We're um, online under Guatemalan Humanitarian Tours or ghtours.org or message Ray and she'll put us in contact. That's right. (laughs) Well, thank you so much, Toby. And um, until next time, we'll we'll meet again and we'll just have to keep talking about this idea that we've dreamed up here today. (laughs) I love it. I can't wait. Thanks a million, Ray. You bet. All right. And for our listeners, uh, be sure to go to the marketingexpedition.com if you haven't already to join our community. Uh, Go listen to and subscribe to this podcast. We love subscribers and people who give us reviews. It makes it makes it even better for others to share and, and understand, too. And until next time, enjoy the journey. Thanks for listening to the Marketing Expedition podcast. Find more online at peppershock.com. Wouldn't it be great if there was one place you can go to get all the latest information and tips about marketing and advertising? The Marketing Expedition community is that place. People like you gather in our online community to build relationships with others and find the latest marketing trends, tactics, tools, and technology. We help you build your brand and your bottom line. Start your adventure today. Visit themarketingexpedition.com to find out more.